Uh, this is a treat. Um, so this is a story of two little houses and one big brief, and probably not something um, unusual when you're doing lots and ads, but um, our client, we've been looking, trying to help them find a house to buy and renovate, and one Saturday they went out and bought two houses that were very small in the middle of Fitzroy in a heritage overlay. And uh, they came in very excited, and we're like, bloody hell, how are you going to get your brief in there? So um, <clears throat> they're on Moore Street, pretty much opposite, just slightly opposite uh, David Flack's office. And they were part of a series of five terraces, and they were actually workers' cottages related to the coffin manufacturing uh, business across the way. They were very small, so two rooms up, very small stair, two rooms down, some outbuildings, and in very poor disrepair. And actually, they didn't really have any... The only brickwork inside was with the chimneys. Now, their brief was enormous. This was a, store, uh, a family of five, but their kids actually were coming up to the end of high school and going into university. Uh, a Greek father, an Italian mother, uh, really wanted to keep their kids close, wanted to make a home that they could all live in. They had a house in Coburg that they had built themselves, a faux federation house, and we'd actually done a house for a friend of theirs, and they these guys had made, you know, they'd, they'd built their wealth over time um, as, as business owners and it was time for them to reap some more rewards and they really wanted to, to live in this area. In fact, they used to come down here every Saturday and just walk around and dream about being there. But the problem for us is like, morally, how do we do this? We've got this little house. Um, they want to cram so much in. I mean, I live in Fitzroy. I've lived in Carlton before that. I love the area. Gentrification is a real issue. How do you get the balance between people coming in with genuine love of the area, but how do you get that all to fit? So um, it was a pretty obvious manoeuvre to knock down the outbuilding, so it was very crappy, and that left us with this, this you know, clean slate and nowhere to put the brief. One of the things we did is we, instead of looking at as a series of spaces tacked on top of each other, we wanted to pull those spaces apart so that we could maximise the aspect from the rooms and also try to give them some garden area. So one of the things about the site, it does face north, it has amazing views out to the Dandenongs, so it's not going to get built out. Um, and it actually has quite a lot of slope to the back, maybe about a metre. So the first manoeuvre was to um, take off the rear of the building and build a new section, which really gave us a little bit more height in there, it actually gave us three levels at the back of what was a two-level building, and then um, added components. And every time we added a building, we put the garden on top. So they didn't lose their garden area. We're very lucky that they were prepared to go with roof gardens. Um, so we never lost any garden area. So this element is the garage. So that element to the back is a garage and the main deck and then the courtyard at the bottom. The other issue is just privacy because, um, you know, they wanted to look out their windows and see the view, so we needed to have privacy screens, but we also, and we faced north, so we had to do screening. So we added an element which is a screen element. Once it opens, it actually provided the screening to the adjoining property and when it was closed, it provides sun screening. I think, you know, we get so worried about screening under the planning scheme and about it being overlooking, but I think traditionally screens were used to, uh, to give you privacy from within. So it's like, how do you make... So we saw them as a bit of an opportunity. They can walk around, they don't need, you know, they can walk around nude, whatever they want with their screens down, and they can still see the view, which is a really nice thing to happen in the inner city. The other thing we felt that was important between the new and the old, and this starts to show the sort of the, the front half of the site which was maintained um, with its historical windows and context, and then this new three-storey extension at the back, was using the stair that linked those two elements um, as a way of organising the spaces and also almost making vertical rooms. We did knock down quite a lot of the house. There was $30,000 just worth of steel in there to hold it up. Now, that wasn't our intention because we were hoping to keep the, uh, the party wall, but at the end, um, it just wasn't structurally viable, so we had to pull it out. And this is the end result. It's a simple building made of press reds with an oxide in, in the mortar, and we worked with Mason, who are a metal manufacturer, to do these screens, which are automated. And you can just see the 
um, one of the roof gardens there in the foreground. So these images are just talking about the quality of space that we get with the screen. So these of them close that sort of filtered shady light. And here, just a couple of views of the stair showing, I mean, it, it, it's actually a really hard house to photograph because actually the rooms are relatively small when you imagine the size of, of the building. So a lot of the sort of spatial organisation and joy of the spaces hap happens vertically. And this is looking on the left, looking back towards this sort of vertical circulation pod that actually holds a lift and powder rooms. And then just playing, we did an open tread, tread detail just to get as much light from the front and back of the side. In many ways, I think the interiors uh, represent a level of competency more than originality. I mean, we design houses for our clients and you know, we're designing them so that our clients are walking in and find them joyous, right? They don't care that I stand up here and talk to you about all the hoo-ha about what's going on in a house. They want to walk in and go, this is our house and we love it, right? So the interiors are very much uh, designed around them. I mean, some of them, like the bag walls, we push through because we really wanted it to feel warm and have this sort of patina. And perhaps a little bit challenging for them, but they embraced them. And I, I would have to say we had their 100% support uh, for, for um, of how we did it. Um, we didn't choose the furniture deliberately. We um, we suggested the person who did the furniture, we helped with some of the colours, but I suppose more and more um, I see myself as an architect who makes spaces and then people occupy those spaces, right? And my spaces have to work, it doesn't matter what furniture they work in. And I suppose, and of course this has got a great furniture, amazing budget, but you know, I think that architecture is something that has to be more than the furniture that's in it. Um, just bathroom and kitchen detailing. I think one of the successes of this project, I think, is how quiet it is in the street. So this is the laneway view at the rear. So the big building is actually the warehouse next door and the house is where the screens are. And we managed to persuade them not to create more opacity to that area. So if they're up there, you can see them, but there's privacy looking out and you get the layering of the garden. And at the front, a little bit of folly. I'm very interested in the city areas, how, sit, how um, properties talk to the street, the little dialogue with the joy. So, um, I mean, these are, every time I go to Italy, I take pictures of the metal screens. And as soon as though Lena was from Italy, it was sort of like these from Venice and we got her on board. And, um, you know, from the street, an observer may not necessarily realise that they're an insertion, but there's something there and there's a hint and it creates a little bit of layering to the street. I there we are. That's it. Last slide. Um, just a picture of the, the living room. <laughs> 